it's going to be a pretty start off. Bigfoot. Bigfoot takes it. Barefoot takes the win. It's going to be a war. Bigfoot starts to come on him. Up, 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 both of them. Look out for Mike Witt. He has flipped. Oh, he's got on the hammer and look at that run. Barefoot may have just done it. Barefoot may have just done it. Poncha truck battle is an eight truck elimination. When we'll go down to a final two, a head-to-head -head battle and competition, it could be anybody's race, Samson, Bigfoot, the Virginia Giant, a lot of the fine trucks are here tonight. It's going to be a real, real tough race. And I'll tell you what, when we go down to the last round, it's going to be... It's time for the drag race shooting down. Bigfoot's out the lead, but here's the dual ladder Giant. Bigfoot, they're side to side. They're side to side. It's a shootout. It's a shootout. It's Bigfoot at the finish. It's Bigfoot at the finish. Stopper, and they're off and rolling. Johnny K gets a gate job on him, but the stopper... Oh, we're in trouble. Stopper, engine seems to be going away. Medford stays after it. Almost frustrated driving. Styles. Medford won't be Whoa! Look out! Or will it be an all Chevrolet showdown? We're about to find out. They're even to the turn. The turn could decide it. They're still even. Now over the hill. Morris is ahead, but here comes Gravedigger. And he pulls it out. He pulled it out on the cars, Dennis Anderson. Side by side as they come to the first bump. And there is Bigfoot coming off a little bit ahead. Now powering once again. Awesome song. Really flies. They touch wheels. They touch. They're still going for the line. And we don't have any idea who won it. It's four-wheel crazy out of Burleson, Texas. This should be a dandy. And it's for all the marbles in Houston. Showtime. To the turn, Bigfoot with a slight lead. A good turn by both. Morris now has the lead. Four wheel crazy's got the lead to the back end, and Andy Brass and Bigfoot has won it. Andy Brass has done it again in Bigfoot. And when I say done it again, what I mean is nobody drives out the back end of a racetrack like Andy Brass. He's done it so many times. You better have brass beaten soundly when you get to the last set of cars because nobody will hammer his truck harder to try and pull out a come from behind victory than Andy Brass, and he's done it again. He was behind, but he refuses to lose. Did not even set the front wheels on the ground. Andy Brass and Bigfoot has pulled it out, winning over Rob Morris and Four Wheel Crazy in a sensational championship matchup here in the Houston Astrodome. And he will be the crowd favorite as they stand for this final in Charleston, West Virginia. But make no mistake about it, there have got to be a lot of people pulling for the upstart, the Pony Express. And he ducks the monster truck racing world. The Pony Express and Anthony Fortier head to head beats the Gravedigger in the final in Charleston, West Virginia. And Ford fans who are extremely loyal to their make have got to be loving this one. One of everybody's favorite Chevrolet trucks, the Chevy panel van of Dennis Anderson and the Gravedigger losing in the final to the kid from New Jersey, Anthony Fortier. Look at this. He gets a big hug from another Ford guy, outlaw owner Nick Rossi. What a big, big victory as you look underneath of the Gravedigger. They're working on that truck already, trying to get it set to go in a third run, which will be coming up at Charleston, West Virginia. But right now, the story is Anthony Fortier. Let's look at it again on replay. The very heavy Pony Express, I think, had an advantage with extra weight. He stayed low to the car and pulls the upset. Ladies and gentlemen, do you believe in magic? Congratulations, a dream come true. That's exactly what this is, isn't it? Very much, very much. I don't even know what to say, Arvin. You're sitting here just shaking just like a leaf on a tree. All these people love you. You've done a great job. You showed us. You built a monster truck that can run with the best of them. Congratulations. It's not just me. It's not just me. My partner deserves just as much credit as me, Vinny. We did it. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you, Arvin.
an excited young man, and well he should be, but Dennis Anderson certainly is not happy about this turn of events in Charleston. He got beat. Dennis, a huge upset by any standards. Yeah, it is. I tell you, it really ticked me off. I came off the line kind of hard. I had to get out of the motor and jump back in it. And I know that I know my truck will beat Pony Express. But Pony Express has been running good, but I just couldn't pull it off tonight. It's a big foot forward and Andy Brass. These two guys have been warring all over the country. Wherever the U.S. Hot Rod Association goes, you can bet Taurus and Bigfoot are going to be near the head of the pack. And when they go side by side, it is truly one of the most exciting matchups in monster truck racing. And here it is for all the marbles. Even going into the turn. They're still even. It's going to be decided on the final set of cars. Oh, my, I can't tell who won it. Bigfoot's in trouble, into the wall. The Bigfoot Ford has smashed into the wall of the Pontiac Silverdome. But did he do it in victory or in defeat? We still have not determined. Look at this isolated replay on the Bigfoot Ford. Brass got in trouble as the back end flips way up, and then when it came down, it sent him flying. He almost went end over end, does a great job to save the truck, but bang, into the wall of the Pontiac Silverdome. In the other lane, Jackie Wilman in the Taurus GMC came off the hill way too high, and it cost him a little bit of time. Then he tried to hammer it out the other end. He, too, almost got in trouble. Did you see the nose of the truck almost kiss the concrete? Incredible. We're going to get another replay, and this angle should show us who got the victory. This is what they came to see in Memphis, Tennessee. Bigfoot Ford, Equalizer Chevrolet, the Monster Smash Final. Oh, who won it? That's the question on everybody's mind in Memphis. Did the Ford win it, or did Equalizer beat Bigfoot again? Now remember, this is the third time these two trucks have matched up. Bigfoot is supposed to be the superior truck, the truck of the 90s. But note, in three races in Memphis, Bigfoot has not finished ahead of Equalizer yet, or has he? They still have not called a winner to this race. Week number one, Equalizer beat Bigfoot. Week number two, Equalizer was called for jumping the start, a questionable call, so he was DQ'd. They handed the win to Bigfoot. This is matchup number three, and so far, nobody's been able to determine the winner. Andy Brass and Bigfoot, David Morris and the Equalizer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when we started the show, we started exactly like we are right now, with these two guys literally in a toss-up for the national points lead, and we're still waiting to find out who is going to be the national points leader. They're rerunning the run right now. If you had to do it any different, what would you do right now, Andy? I don't think it would be anything. You know, both of us run a good run. You know, I stayed in my lane, run consistent. Dave was running real well all night, so there ain't nothing really I would change. Okay, we're going to bounce over to David here. You do anything different? Yeah, I'd have made sure I kept my foot down on the floor when I landed in between the cars in the dirt hill. I think I got off of it too much. Well, we're going to wait just a second. It looks like, boy, there's a strong possibility we actually may have a tie. Now, this has never happened before. If that's the case, they may have to go back to a qualifying time. I do not believe in this sport they're going to make them go and run these trucks over again. So sit tight. I'm sure we'll have some replays coming up. We're going to get with the officials. As soon as we do get the official word, we'll get back to you. Once again, watching the replay, Bigfoot and Equalizer, you can see him in midair. Now, the finish line is midway through the final car. Here, from this angle, it looked like Bigfoot had a slight edge. But on the timing tape, and the other thing to remember is that Bigfoot is airborne. Equalizer was staying down closer to the car. So on the TNT timing tape, they're virtually side by side. A dead heat. Let's listen to the conversation around the timing tape. track announcer Butch Krieger, the first ever tie in the three-year history of racing on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. We'll be right back to try and determine a winner.
foot lost the world title to USA One in 1988, then sat out most of last year while building a new truck. The drivers who did campaign last year are not too happy that Bigfoot gets to race after having all of that time to regroup. Well, it's sort of mixed feelings. Last year he wouldn't come out and play with us, and this year he's coming out and picking on us. And so he took a year off to, you know, to sort of regroup and build a new truck, and that's all he's doing is coming out and picking on us this year. But obviously has a definite advantage over any of us. Uh, he's had a lot of time to get his stuff together and come back out with a new truck. And I don't know, I guess I compare my truck. My truck's a couple years old, and it's it's really out of his league, you know. So I don't know, all I can do is the best I can to beat him. I don't uh, think the design of the truck is, uh, is a problem. Uh, but it's, they should have been out running with us uh, that in 1989. But uh, I don't know, what do you do about it? That's the politics. Well, I don't like it right now because... Bigfoot's dominating, you know, but I don't know, you know, if, if I could do the same thing, I'd probably do it too, but I just, I don't think the suspension that he's running is fair to be running with lead spring trucks, and the reason I say that right now is because I can't afford his suspension that he's running. Candid comments from Dennis Anderson's grave digger trying to keep up with Bigfoot, but let it be known that a lot of these guys are building new trucks, and by the middle of this year, plan to be able to go tooth and nail with Bigfoot. I'll tell you, there's one guy who can go with him right now. That's David Morris in the Equalizer. And again, let me point out, as we rerun for the first time ever in TNT history, a Monster Smash final, that Bigfoot has still not crossed the finish line in front of Equalizer after three tries. This is going to be try number four. It's actually take two in this one event, the rerun of the Monster Smash final. Bigfoot and Equalizer to settle it in Memphis, Tennessee. Well, they'll either settle it or start a new argument. How can you get any closer than these two trucks have been in Memphis? Bigfoot and Equalizer, punch for punch, blow for blow, and race for race, it's been side by side. Here's the replay, the Bigfoot Ford, you can see him lunging, and this time by a half wheel length, the victory goes to Bigfoot, he has beaten the equalizer, Andy Brass in the winner circle, Army's with him and Bigfoot owner Bob Chandler. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an all-American story right here, the man with the dream is on my right, Bob Chandler, the man that took the dream to the winner circle today, Andy Brass, and Andy, it just did not come easy in Memphis, did it? No, it wasn't, you know, we would have to run a, run a dead heat there with him and then turn around running again, we knew we were just going to have to push it, maybe pull the light a little bit. He's tough. Yes, he is. Uh, Dave's been running good all night. We've been watching these times. We was pulling 379. I don't know. Uh, maybe we were sleeping a little bit or something because we went down to a 382. We backed up a little bit. Well, congratulations to you. And Bob Chandler, what can I say? You had the dream. You made it come true. And you told me earlier this is just a taste of what monster truck racing's coming to. It's going to get bigger and better as the years go along, right? I'm sure it is. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of other guys building trucks like this. The suspension is the answer. Dave Morris runs suspension. Now, his truck is lighter. That's one of the reasons he's got the advantage here today. But uh, it's going to get better and better. It's going to be neat racing. So Bigfoot and Equalizer are established as the best two monster trucks early in 1990. But it's a long season on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. I'm Scott Douglas. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Heck woman with Taurus just about ready to go. Fred Schaefer making his final approach now. Maybe seeing a little more uh, mind game playing on the starting line here as Jack Wilman looked like he was going up to stage, then nailed the throttle for a little quick burnout up to the cars. Fred Schaefer once again gets stuck sitting back at the starting line. So far, it hasn't seemed to have affected uh, Fred Schaefer or any of the games that have been played against him. I should point out that the Taurus team, with the crowd definitely behind it, as you can hear, probably has more to gain here in this final than Schaefer, if only because they were so close behind the Bigfoot team, number two in points coming into this event. If they could win this, it could make a big difference in points. These engines and these machines are very similar to that used in drag racing. And, of course, a lot of times the drivers will put them in neutral and clean those engines out. They want to make sure that they're absolutely ready to respond when they get the green light. Starting line personnel making sure that everything is lined up perfectly because a lot is at stake with this race. Not only the prize money available tonight, but also the points. Barefoot takes 
the win. You could not have asked for a prettier final round dash. Side by side off the line, side by side of the air. Fred Schaefer asks who won? And they tell him. The crowd's going wild. Obviously, it was close enough that Fred Schaefer had no idea who won. Look at this hit on the cars. Sheer power sailing this thing a full truck length over the finish line. That was the most brute power propelled run we've seen all night long. And another rough landing. He stops it right in front of the fans who are already going nuts. In the other lane, Jack Wilman left the starting line dead even with the barefoot Chevy. He also got it way up in the air. He lands right on the finish line as well. A rough bounce, but it was a matter of four feet at the finish line, making the difference between a winner and a loser. Fred Schaefer pulls it off in a big, big win. Up to the line right now, getting ready to go. It'll be the Southern Hustler, driven by Kevin Dabney. And his competition will be the Eliminator, driven by Jim Reese. Both machines ready to go. Another incredible come from behind win. What a job by Reese. You remember the Ecology Eliminator won one of our ESPN national events in the U.S. Hobbit Association Trail earlier this year. This guy can drive coming from behind after a big hole shot by Dabney, then way up in the air at the finish line to win it. I'll tell you what, that had to be close for both drivers. They had to be wondering who won that one. Jim Reese, definitely a uh, driver to watch tonight. You see Kevin Dabney leaving the starting line after getting a great hole shot, the rear engine of truck. It's the only one in competition to the 16-car monster truck field. Right uh, there, definitely getting sideways and a rough, rough landing. Dabney, the home state hero, fails to overcome the big Chevy. Steve has in Nightmare and Scott has in Barefoot. They're staring at 225 feet. the victory did you see the altitude of nightmare nightmare may have set a guinness book of record in clearing that second batch of cars the air under nightmare was incredible ladies and gentlemen the winner is nightmare five inches nightmare takes the victory for the monster trucks here in the hoosier dome the auto value King Crunch, and he goes up against John Brain in the micro machine. You talk about snake bite. Scott Stevens feels he's been that way. But you know, they got up back on the horse that threw him. They made their first run. Let's see how hard he goes. Look at that. Like it never happened before. Like a gunfighter. He's going for the throat. Oh, and I think he got it. Whoa, he's and going he's over upside again. down again. All the way over. Scott Stevens has to be saying, oh, no, not again. The crew runs over there. They're talking well, to he's him. he's moving in the yeah. cockpit. He apparently is okay, but how many times can you roll one over before you finally throw up your hand and say, I think I've had enough of this? You know, this says a lot about the Cobra seat that he runs and all his safety equipment. He's told me many times, I don't really, you know, because of the safety equipment, he runs the Simpson belts and, and the Simpson suit and all this stuff. Safety is important. He's got the Cobra seat to keep him strapped in. And believe me, if that stuff didn't work, he would be hurt by now as many times as he's gone over. Aside from qualifying, he has been upside down, what, three of his last four runs, exactly. I think? Exactly. 
Exactly. It's coming out. The rescue people right here with us. And the ambulance was there almost immediately. Yeah, good, he, uh, good safety crew. He's had his bell rung. He wants to clear the cobwebs out right now and uh, take some time to collect his thoughts. A little wobbly. That was a wild ride. You know, it's almost like there's something in the truck that's not doing what it's supposed to. Watch the front wheels. I think he's still going straight, but something's making that truck turn. You notice the truck is angled to the right, and then when it hits, it hooks and goes 180 degrees back to the left, Gary. So he's staying straight with the steering wheel. The chassis is reacting, and there's some kind of force throwing that truck one way or the other, and it's not the same direction every time. Gary, they're going to have to go back to Texas and put a new chassis under that truck. We are Thanks, Brett, and as Gary mentioned earlier, Tom Martin always consistent, and once again, a winner here. This is it, the classic matchup, Bigfoot versus Barefoot. This is the event that everyone came here to see. It's the classic lineup with Ford and Chevrolet, and this is a view from inside of Bigfoot. Here we go, both drivers bringing up the RPM. They're just about ready to go. Here we go, they're on their way. Look at the height of Barefoot. Bigfoot is the winner. Bigfoot takes the win. Gary, you mentioned the height on Barefoot, but it seemed like the speed of Bigfoot is what brought Bigfoot to the victory here. That's correct. That time that he spent in the air of Barefoot cost him the race. Bigfoot went straight and right through across the finish line. When we come back, we'll take a look at how the race looked from inside the cab of Bigfoot. We'll also have a winner's interview. And here's a look at another brand new truck. This is Jack Wilman out of Granite City, Illinois, up near St. Louis in the truck he calls Taurus. And here's a look at Alan Tura out of Warren, Ohio. This is Goliath. Now, Tura's been on the sport just about as long as anybody, but he doesn't run in, o in open competition. He's got, it's, it's a book-type truck and everything, but he decided to come over with Goliath and see what he could do against these heads-up racing trucks. Man, if he picked a bad guy to go against. Well, already Wilman Sr. has the measure of Goliath, and he'll take the victory. Goliath motoring very slowly. Now he begins to pick up the throttle just a bit. Oh, he's in trouble, Gary. Oh, he's in big trouble. He picked up the throttle, but not enough. He was in that section where he didn't have enough speed to make it all the way over the cars. He made it over all right, upside down. He's okay. He bails out in a hurry. He can't be too happy with his decision to continue on. He was beaten, yeah. but he tried to complete the run. Boy, that is a, that, that truck, it, it may not look like it. Allen's okay. The, the word we get, he's okay. That truck has sustained a tremendous amount of damage. If it had been going faster, I don't think the truck would have been torn up this bad. I think had he had more momentum going exactly. over that jump, he would have been all right. Yeah, exactly. Extensive damage to Goliath. Now, let's look once again. Now, right here, he's beaten. Yeah, it's the a done deal. The run is over. Why even complete the run? Why not just gingerly take him alongside the cars and off back to the paddock area? Well, Alan, like I say, he's, he's a showman, and he wanted to uh, well, show the people what the, the truck could do. Then. Nail well, the hammer hard. Right he here, he did. Speed. Too late too late he needed more momentum hitting that second ramp exactly yeah you got to have the ground speed you got to fly these trucks there's no doubt about that well, again right side of the screen guessing his decision to go on this run a very costly area yeah, you're judgment gonna, you're going to see how costly in just a second like i said they're getting ready to write that truck back up a lot of damage gary they'll need a pickup truck to haul away the pieces from this pickup truck as they as you say start to write this truck and there is goliath mm. oh look at that all i see are dollar signs yeah. as the fans look on here in canfield alan's gonna pick up the pieces and walk away another day at the office for a monster truck driver Goliath does not look like much of a bully. It'll be a short haul back to Warren, Ohio, but a lot of work to do for Alan. He's standing by with Army Armstrong. Alan, first of all, are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Do you have any idea what caused it to go over like that? It didn't look like the speed was there. I would never thought the truck would have gone over like that. Well, I didn't quite have the speed, so what happened, I think I dropped the back tires in that little rut, and it like ricocheted me. It bucked me right over, and I didn't get on the throttle quick enough. And w once, once I knew I was standing straight on end, all I did was, was hold on. And I said, I'm going over. I said to myself, I said, just hold on for the ride. 
This is the first time out with the truck. It's running for the Ford camp. This truck is a lot lighter than the truck they've run in the past. They believe this truck is going to be a goer, but if you look at the engine, you'll notice a lot of blue smoke coming out of it. That is not a good sign, but Wyatt's going to lean on it. Oh, three side by side. Scott, it's beautiful. Oh, I don't know. Right at the end, the Nightlife Chevrolet might have caught him. It looked very close to a dead heat. Nightlife might have pulled it out, or Outlaw might have won. A dandy race. I think we'll get a look at a replay, and maybe this will tell the story, Army. Again, watch for the blue smoke. Okay, now, at this point, basically, they're all side by side. The floor starts to come out, but look how low Lysoric stays to the ground. That helps him. The replay word comes up. Who's the winner, Scott? It is the Outlaw by a nose. Mike Wine out of Pensacola, New Jersey. Edges, Dave Lysoric, and the Nightlife Chevrolet. All right, there's a look at Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher with the oil pickup problem. And he goes up against Bigfoot 8. This is Andy Brass. So we have North Carolina against Missouri. Well, Gary, exactly. This is exactly what I thought would happen. Andy Brass let Gary start his truck, go to the line. He immediately goes into the line with him. They're here to race. They're not here to play games. Well, they also are considering the, uh, the good of the entire sport, exactly. not just this one championship run here in Canfield. Oh, we got a race. Check it out, Look Gary. at this. Look at the crusher. And here comes Foot. Bigfoot has so much horsepower. Once that pickup truck settles down in no man's land, we have seen it time and time and time again. The Crusher had him. Gary Porter had him. They look like fighter pilots dogfighting each other in no man's land. Look at this. Boy, they are heads up. But watch. Gary yeah. Porter has the measure of foot right here, and here comes Andy Brass. It's all horsepower. Uh -huh, exactly. And there's the margin of victory, and here's Andy Brass. Andy, when you go up against that guy, it it's a lot of teamwork that people are not even aware of, isn't it? That's right. You know, thanks to the guys, our crew members and stuff back there, it's given a lot of help. We had a little problems with the truck earlier today, but we got it pretty well ironed out. I was watching Gary all day. His times was running about the same. We was running a little bit faster on time. I knew Gary was going to pull a good light, and we just had to not worry about it and just try to play. If we did get behind, play catch up in the middle, and that's what we did. And just a moment ago, I told you, you're going to see a race between two gentlemen. That's exactly what I mean. Gary? <laughs> Final matchup will again be a Ford versus Chevrolet showdown. There's the Ford, Rob Morris out of Burleson, Texas, and there's the Chevrolet. Dennis Anderson's grave digger from Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. We know one Chevy is in the final. Will a Ford join him, or will it be an all Chevrolet showdown? We're about to find out. They're even to the turn. The turn could decide it. They're still even. Now over the hill. Morris is ahead, but here comes Gravedigger. And he pulls it out. He pulled it out on the cars. Dennis Anderson with a huge leap. And the Gravedigger will go to the Monster Smash Final against Whiskey Business. Now again, right here, the Gravedigger is behind. But Anderson hammers it hard. And look at the leap. Wow. Dennis Anderson gets it done. Man, what a run. Here you'll see an isolated replay now of the four-wheel crazy Ford. Morris was in the lead at this point, but you can see he bounced coming off the hill, and that was just enough to cost him a chance at a victory over the grave digger. Dennis Anderson wins it by about a half a length. We're going to look at both trucks now coming to the finish line, and there... Now we have semifinal action. We take a look at Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, against Fred Schaefer in barefoot, a pair of Chevrolets. This could be the quickest run of the day. Fred Schaefer look for a wheels-up run. The Crusher's not going to roll over. Both of them Chevrolet. It's going to be quick. Oh, Porter leaves. Schaefer airs it out. And Schaefer oh. takes it by a fender. Fred Woo. Schaefer, the fast qualifier. And you can see why he was the fast qualifier. 
Look at it again, Army. They leave. Well, the whole shot, you're right, goes to Gary Porter. Gary Porter worked off a line lock like the drag racers use on the transmission to get the initial jump, but Schaefer just muscles by with that horsepower in the far lane. Well, it could have been the gearing that won it for Fred Schaefer. I think it just came down to old brute horsepower, Gary. <laughs> oh, this is going to be an all-out battle, and both drivers are going to have to pedal down all the way. Another Ford and Chevy matchup here in the final round of the Superdome. The U.S. Harmon Association's National Championship Series continues. This is be the wildest race of the last two seasons, Gary. Listen to the fans at the Superdome. They are going wild. They are getting ready. They're on their feet for this one. Get ready. Here we go. Whoa! Look out! I don't know who won that one. Absolutely the most incredible final round you could ever hope to see. And I honestly, Jerry, do not know who won it either. On the replay, you can see both machines lead as one. Look at the Taurus Chevrolet in the air. Only one touchdown before he hits the cars. The elapsed time, an incredible 4.38 seconds. Bigfoot blows him over. Now actually tags him down in the shutdown area. Absolutely incredible final round. 4.38 seconds for the Taurus Chevrolet, the quickest one of the event. Bigfoot, though, even quicker at 4.22 seconds. There, the motor explodes in midair. They land. Bigfoot comes across on the brakes. We're in the air, tags the Taurus Chevrolet. But we've just gotten the word, Jerry, from the floor. Bigfoot is the official winner. Unbelievable. Look at the smoke. You can hardly see Bigfoot in that cloud of engine smoke. And in the near lane, a whole Chevy driven by Bob Holman. Here he comes the line right now. It's a young man from the Buckeye State of Ohio. The beast, barefoot. Oh, my Chevrolet fans. That's his for number two man. Chevrolet fans. What about it? Driven by Bob Holman, but it looks like Barefoot may have just beaten the time turned in earlier by Bigfoot. Chevrolet fan, Barefoot! He's tough, he's tough! What a run, what a run! Can you believe him watching? What a run! Meanwhile, back in Anaheim, California, we are ready for a showdown of monster behemoths. It'll be Jim Cramer at the wheel of the Bigfoot Ford, taking on another hometown hitter. Jim Reese at the wheel of the Ecology Auto Wrecking Eliminator. The Z-shaped course has caused quite a few drivers to make several second guesses that cost him a run. But right now, everybody will have to go all out. They leave the line and the whole shot goes to the hometown show away. Through the air, they head for the first turn and a tap. They actually touch going into a first turn. Kramer, hard on the throttle, takes the turn perfectly in the blue Ford. They now move into the last turn. And they collide. Unbelievable. Kramer gets back on the gas and will cruise across the finish line. A winner in Bigfoot. But this may not be over yet. The officials are down on the track. Jim Reese is stunned. He says it was an illegal maneuver, and he's coming out of the eliminator. We'll have to wait to find out. This is a big controversy. Stay with us. We are in the middle of a huge controversy here in Anaheim, California. This is going to need a big decision. Was it rough driving? Was Bigfoot in front of the eliminator? Reese is mad. Mike Speller in front of the truck, the U.S. Hobbit Association event director, talking with officials by way of two-way radio to find out whether or not it's a legal maneuver. The whole shot definitely went to the Chevrolet. They touch there when Reese gets on the brakes too hard for the first turn. Kramer makes up this much distance, and they come out of the last turn together. Incredible. 
Was there a driver at fault in this situation? And we've just received word from the U.S. Harbor Association officials that Bigfoot is the winner. The win officially goes to Bigfoot. The Eliminator sitting with a flattened tire. Driver Jim Reese throwing his gloves in the cockpit. The crew is upset. They say no way. Jim Kramer is out of Bigfoot and Chris Chapman's got him. Jim, I think you're hard of the verdict. You are the winner. Well, that's why we have officials. The track is really narrow over there. And we talked about this earlier at the driver's meeting that when you swing around like that, we've got a little more room even if you have to drop off of that berm. It's not an ideal track, but that's what we chose to run with. It's a little tight in that area. And uh, all night long, like I discussed with Dre Digger, that came up, just drop off that berm, give a little room. You got to give a little bit. And uh, that's why I got officials. If they thought I was in his lane, I would be disqualified and he would be the winner. But they judged that I was okay and he didn't give me enough room. So uh, it was a good run. He run hard. Jim Reese is really a, a good competitor. And uh, we'll get him next time. Or he'll get me, maybe. What in the world went through your mind when you all got together out there? <laughs> all I heard was a boom. It didn't feel real bad. I don't think we have a lot of damage. But I really need to check it out. Jim, it doesn't really seem fair that you're, you're not in there. It looked like you had that race won. Yeah, I thought I had it run. It was a real good run for me. I feel like the best of the night. Track conditions are a little tough. It gets tight in this corner. And, uh, you know, I don't think it was a fair call. But I guess that's racing. So do you believe Jim Kramer came into your lane and knocked you out of this one? Yeah, I do. You know, when you come into a situation like this, you have to uh, you have to bow right away. And I came out of my corner. I was accelerating, heading for the finish line. As you can see, if you point the camera, there's only so much lane here before you have a drop off. Where was I to go? Over there? Probably would have ended up the same way. Looks like you are obviously not satisfied with the official's decision. Well, yeah, I'm not real happy. You know, this is our hometown. Got a lot of fans here. We came out here to, to race and then come out on top, and we thought we had a chance at it. But I'll have to settle with second place tonight. Indeed, he will after one of the most outrageous final rounds imaginable. The Ecology Eliminator comes out second best, and another victory for the Bigfoot team. At the Met to get around that incredible black Chevrolet from California. We've got the Skull Bandit online and Barefoot. Should be a good race. Yeah, I really don't think there's any uh, partiality with the crowd at all either. I think they're about 50% rooting for one, 50% for the other. Side by side of the cars, absolutely perfect race. And Kelly, I don't think anybody could call that one. Our event director on the floor, George Carpenter, is probably watching the slow motion replay himself. Here we see they leave the starting line dead even. Barefoot pulls up on the ramp, then Sarton drives around in the air. Here comes Davis in Barefoot as Sarton wheel stands again. They are absolutely side by side. Our event director, George Carpenter from the U.S. Hobbit Association, will have to make the decision based on a video teak replay. That's the official way it goes, Kelly. At U.S. Hobbit Association Racing, if it's too close to call visually, they use a videotape camera mounted directly at the finish line to call the winner. We'll just have to wait for the word. Well, even watching the slow motion replay, I cannot tell who won that race. Brett, this is a real tribute to the sportsmanship of these drivers to go back and run this race again. The flag drops again, side by side. 
starting to drive away for a full truck length victory at the finish line. What a top-end charge Gary Sarton has in that machine. The crowd obviously going crazy, and Sarton himself says, hey, what did you expect? The Soul Bandit team picks up the victory here at the Seattle Kingdom as the crowd gives both drivers literally a standing ovation. The helmet comes off. What a fast. And Grave Digger has said the kid will not beat him this time. Army Armstrong, he's made no bones about it. Dennis feels like he made a mistake last week, and he's going to make up for it right now. Yeah, he will not make a mistake right now. Watch the truck. is going to land perfect. Front wheel down. It was close. The Grave Digger is going to be in that next round. No room for error, but the Digger pulls it off by a heartbeat. Wow, what a race. The kid gave him all he wanted, but Dennis Anderson comes out victorious. He gets his revenge. Well, Dennis, by three hundredths of a second, you reel this kid back in. But he's not going to roll over a bit for you, is he? No, he's not. I knew he was going to gouge on it. We were talking back there in the back, and he's got it out for me. I got it out for him. You know, what can we say? It's racing. Well, he's won one. You've won one. You'll get together later in the year. We're going to let you get back to the pit area. What a super job you've done this year. You've really, really impressed a whole lot of people. Yeah, we've done some good work. I'm uh, just a little frustrated right now. I'm, I don't even know what to say. Uh, nothing to be frustrated about. You've made a lot of friends here. We're impressed with your truck. We look forward to seeing you later on on the tour. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Army. There is a look at Jack Wilman Jr. in Taurus, the GMC, a truck owned by his father. He will take on Andy Brass and Bigfoot. The road to the final. Taurus defeated Nightmare and the Carolina Crusher. And then he had a bye to the finals, whereas Bigfoot defeated USA 1, King Crunch, and Nightlife. And there's a look at Bigfoot 8. There's no saying in motion. David Morris' equalizer Chevrolet will now take on the Auto Value King Crunch, another GM product out of Texas. Former world champion equalizer, Boris has the lead into the turn over King Crunch. Crunch negotiates the turn well. They're even coming off the hill. Equalizer gets the victory. It was close. It was very close. Here you'll see him come to the finish line. Equalizer has a bit of a lead. King Crunch making up ground, but at the finish line, the difference is the length of one wheel. Outlaw comes out against an upstart, Pony Express, Anthony Fortier. Watch this New Jersey kid as he pulls a huge surprise. The Outlaw Ford got to the finals in night number one. Mike Wine is very cocky, maybe overconfident. Let's find out. Watch the Pony Express. Mustang stuns him in Charleston. Outlaw looking good, running strong. Thought he was the baddest Ford in Charleston, but on this night, Anthony Fortier had a little something to say about it. Pony Express shocks him, and the Outlaw is put away for the night. The kid from New Jersey will be going into the semifinal round. Fortier gets that helmet off. And we'll come over to talk with Army Armstrong after really pulling the biggest upset so far in this weekend at Charleston, West Virginia. Let's see how the kid feels about knocking off the outlaw. Army, he's yours. Well, it looks like the, the Mac tools are working for you on that rascal tonight. You're laying down some super shots out here. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. It's all running good. It's, everything's coming together all in one shot. I had a real bad night last night. Put it all back together. It seems to be doing good. I hope to take it all the way. You run a lot of exhibition stuff all around the country. This is the first opportunity I've had to see you actually race with these TNT monster trucks. How do they stack up? Are they what you thought they would be as far as being tough? There's a couple of them that I don't think I've really got a chance against, but I'll just give it my best. There's a lot of guys out there that are strong running guys. They do it for a living. It's a hobby for me. I'd like to make it a living. I'm working at it. Tell you what, you've impressed a whole lot of people. Good luck in that next round. Thank you, Arnold. Four minutes. Anderson is on the clock. He's got four minutes to get in. But as you can see in the pit, our camera's showing it to you. Anderson will make it. Now, the folks inside don't know it yet. They're going to roar when they see him come through the door. Tracy Smart at the start line also has a clock on him as they're checking the clock. Dennis will make it, and the fans are going to go nuts when they see him come through that door. Well, the situation is he's going to take all that five minutes. He can, I, I don't look for him to come in until less than a minute. The reason he he will not come in is that he's trying to get air in the tire. He just told Chris outside he's going to put more air pressure in it. That's where we are right now. It's time for the monster smash.
Dennis Anderson, Grave Digger, gets way out of shape. You can see he came way over. And I'll tell you, Army, he actually hit the equalizer's tire to absorb the impact, or it really could have been very bad for David Morris. Well, another thing to help Morris is he gets out and raises his hand. Both right tires blew out when the truck had impact with the ground. Again, that kind of absorbed some of the impact. Well, after a great race, I really hate to see that. The fans in Rome are actually booing David Morris. It's just they like the Digger so much. David put on a great race and has had a great weekend. No doubt about it, Digger's a fan favorite, but this time, David Morris got it. David, it's kind of like driving a sprint car, I guess. You're so darn busy driving, you don't you don't really have a chance to, to get away from situations like that. That was just blood and guts. Yeah, that other guy, he... he you, there's two guys out there, and both of you got to do the best you can do. Uh, I knew Dennis has been getting pretty wild here tonight. As every run he's made getting out of shape, so I was expecting it. <laughs> You're sitting there with a big smile on your face. This is just part of the game, man. And when you go to the table and sit down and play ball with these yeah. guys, it's going to be part of it. When you're out here racing side by side like that, it's just like any other motorsport, uh, things happen. You can see the tire being blown out on the equalizer at the end of the run. Dennis Anderson, man, he got way out of shape, and he's coming over right now. But let's take one more look at this thing. Anderson from this angle. Boy, it's a great shot. Our camera crew all over this thing. see Dennis Anderson just about turned equalizer over after smashing into it. Let's see what Dennis has to say. Dennis, when are you going to learn to drive that truck? I don't know. That was one wild ride. You know, sitting at the line army and all night long I've been building the motor up because the motor's got a stumble in it with those big carburetors I'm running and I know better and I sat there at the line, didn't bring the motor up like I wanted to and, I, and it made me look like I was sleeping at the line. So then I just killed it, tried to get, you know, trying to run after him. And that was the first time I'd run that lane all night, too. Really, I should have switched over and tried that lane, but I just got in a real serious nosedive, and the motor went dead on me, and I ran over, and I guess I guess he was coming my way, and I was going his way, too. But anyhow, we locked horns, and this is where we ended up. This is 1990 Renegade Monster Truck Racing, isn't it? That's right. If, if you can't beat them, you got to kill them, I guess. <laughs> That's kind of putting it bluntly. Dennis Anderson's grave digger passing into the equal line. But now let's turn it over to Scott Douglas. Chris overstating the obvious. This is grave digger country. Dennis Anderson's stomping ground, Roanoke, Virginia. They came to see him, and they hope to see him win. And Dennis is here to put on a show for him. Maybe that explains part of last week's final against Equalizer. Army talked with Dennis about that run in the final a week ago. An awesome ending took place in Roanoke, Virginia. As the final came down to the Grave Digger and the Equalizer and Dennis Anderson, it was literally a war out there last week. Yeah, it was, Army. You know, when I came to the line with, uh, with David, I hadn't run that lane all night. I've been favoring the right side because I figured that was the best lane to run out of. I qualified good in it. I jumped in that left lane. I had a little problems leaving the line, and I tried to make up for it. And I got a real bad bounce. I think when I came over the hill, the front end of the truck bounced up, and it kind of more or less done a little wheelie to the cars, and it hit the back wheels and would trip the truck and throw the tail end up in the air. And I just come across the cars on the front wheels, and I nearly turned over, and I thought I was going to turn over and get equalizer, so I had to hammer into the motor to pull out the nose out to keep from turning over. And as I hammered into it, I rammed him right in the side, tore his truck up. I done a little bit of damage to my truck, but he kind of got the worst end of the deal. Let's talk about the damage that was done to your truck. Uh, really a lot of sheet metal damage, plus you blew a tire out. Other than that, not that high dollar type of damage. You're going to be back this week at action, but man, he's been out there hammering and nailing, trying to get his truck back together. A lot more damage to him than to you. Yeah, well, see, these, these big old heavy steel shields, you know, I, I jammed right in and I broke his, uh, broke his um, high dollar coil over shocks and broke a few other things underneath the truck because I really hammered him hard and it pinned him to the ground because it uh, popped two tires off the rim on the other side and it jammed him down to the ground, so I pushed on him pretty hard. Indeed, the damage obvious to both trucks, but most noticeably to the world champion equalizer. Look at that side. That's on the equalizer. I don't get mad. I get even. We'll find out if that's true. <laughs> This guy is on a roll. You like Chevrolet, you gotta know and love Fred Schaefer. Well, Fred Schaefer is the fast qualifier, which means he gets lane choice. These drivers do not like the lane that Snakebite is running in right now. And it's all Fred Schaefer, oh, Army. What a clean run. Oh, here we go again. 
Snake bites in trouble through the Hydra barrier, and oh, look at that. Is in. anybody in the building? The storage building at the end of the track. Gary, he completely demolished it. Literally ran through it. Look. Well, there's a chest freezer that he's on top, and of course the fans are on their on their feet right now, showing uh, concern as the safety crew members are over there, one checking on the driver and making sure no one was inside that storage unit. Let's watch again. Let's see where he gets in trouble. Once again, a short shutdown area. Short shutdown area. The problem comes at the end of the run with the back of the truck. I want you to notice when he lands down. He'll basically what we call spring the back up. See, now he's on the nose. The back comes down. Notice the rear wheel's turning. He is just along for the run. I wonder why they didn't hit the kill box to shut him off, though. He goes right through the hydro barriers. They basically would have done their job had the truck not been under a throttle-up condition, Gary. Well, we are being told now that there, there was no one in that storage area. No one uh, injured. The driver is okay. Colt Cobra a bit stunned, we are being told. Now, he climbs out, and uh, you can see how slowly he comes out. At this point, any driver in motorsports starts to collect his thoughts, exactly. starts to clear the cobwebs out of the head to assess the damage and try to go back and reassess what happened. Well, he's coming out. First thing he did was look at the GTS fiberglass body to make sure it's okay. It's amazing. It was not torn up that much, but that truck really had an impact. That freezer must weigh about 2,000 pounds, and it just leaked right on top of it. We are happy again to report no one was in that storage area. Colt is all right. He's made his way down to Army. Colt, the rule of thumb in a sport, and we've always talked about it in the past, you get in trouble, you throttle up, and it pulls you out of trouble. Not the case today. Uh, you know, Army, this left lane, it's, uh, it's a pretty rough lane. The right lane, we a lot of guys qualified in. It was a lot faster lane. I, uh, I drove that barefoot truck. I knew I was going to have to run hard and run fast. Uh, kind of threw me off the one side there, and I was, the back end sprung up on me. I was powering out of it, and I was kind of looking for the, uh, the remote control guy to be killing me, and uh, it never came around. And next thing I know, I was sitting in the barn down there. So, uh, you know, it's one of them freak accidents that happened. This is a pretty short track here. Uh, you got to be all you have all your P's and Q's together when you're running out here, and you know these boys are making it tough on me. But uh, I'm gonna keep struggling along here, and I'm gonna be back. I can guarantee it. That's right, he certainly does. Because just a few weeks ago at the Houston Astrodome, Taurus did beat Bigfoot. Now, this is a new breed of monster truck. These are the racers, all tubular chassis, special suspension, fiberglass body. They are fast, 9,000 minimum pounds. Taurus will be in lane one, driven by Jack Wilman. Bigfoot in lane two, driven by Andy Brass. This ought to be a good race. The winner of this one goes into the final. Who's it going to be? Here we go. Oh, and it's Bigfoot. Bigfoot by about a fender. Bigfoot accepting the challenge from Taurus gets a fantastic start. Clears all the automobiles and flies through as the winner and moves into our final. against the King Kong Ford. Watch for the light in the right-hand side of your screen. It's gone green, and that means it's showtime. It's not a time to shoot them both. King Kong, how about a Kong takes the win? They pull it off the scrap heap, the antique, one of the original monster trucks. They only brought it back because their newer truck had to be rebuilt. And King Kong shows it's still as good as they come. Steve Kane drives it to a victory in the Monster Smash Final over the Equalizer, and he did it impressively. He beat the top of the class today. He beat them all day long. No gimmies. This has got to be one of his best days ever. A good heads-up run by both drivers. The transmission may have faded a little bit in the far lane, but King Kong just aired it out all the way over the vehicles. 
It was just his day. He was on a roll. Isolated on the equalizer. Did you see anything wrong with the run, Army? No, but I did hit the RPM. You see the engine start to free wheel there. The RPMs would indicate the transmission might have gone away on that truck. We'll check. So the equalizer gets a second this time around. It'll still help him in points because he put Bigfoot away in the semifinal round. Another look, and this time we'll have King Kong closer to us. And let's kind of just keep our eyes peeled on a great run by Steve Kane. Okay, watch for smoke on the blue truck. That'd be an indication. If you would please. Yeah, the transmission, I believe, started to fade. I'm not taking anything away from Kane. That was a beautiful run by Carl. There's Steve coming your way, Army. Well, Steve Kane, congratulations. You took a truck that what are you supposed to be here and you win with it. Yeah, the truck ran real good tonight. Uh, I feel that I would have done it last week if the drive shaft and everything would have stayed in there, but uh, that's old stuff, old news by now. But uh, the truck ran real good tonight. You did a good job of driving it, too. We've got to give credit where credit's due. Let me get this youngster in here real quick. 19 years old, congratulations, happy birthday to you. Uh, nothing to be ashamed of, this guy, this, this was his night. Yeah, his truck was just working real good on his track. Our transmission went out that run. I'll tell you what, both of you guys got a lot to be proud of. You're gonna make a good old phone call back to Texas, and they're gonna be doing the old Texas two-step in your favorite night, congratulations. Thank you, Armin. The celebration will also be... Well, USA One has been put back together since that wild ride, and since a subsequent crash in New York City a week later with Tough Enough, USA One is looking good tonight. Here he'll race Awesome Kong and Fanatic in the quarterfinal round. Keep an eye on Awesome Kong. He'll be close to the camera going against one. Now Fanatic moves on him. At half track, it looks good. Wilkie starts to leg it out a little bit. Awesome Kong comes back. And again, I can't tell. And they're going to the wall again, Scott. Well, they almost collided at the end of the track. And one other thing to notice. First time run for the Fanatic, the lady Arlene Ed. Might not have quite as much truck as the others, but she is backing off not one little bit. No, you'll notice on a replay, she ran with them over the first set of cars. Now is when horsepower takes over. You got a Janky engine and a Jasmine engine. What can I say? You got a whole lot of horsepower in an awfully close race. Steve Wilkie, USA One, popping out of the truck, getting a victory, and as always, he's pumped up. Army's ready for him. Let's go to that interview now. Well, it kind of looks like the USA One of old. Steve, you got this thing on the road. I'll tell you what, Army, 220 feet and a lot of shutdown. I'm using every square inch of the shutdown, but that's why we're running fast. Uh, again, Duvalier, Chevrolet, all the people putting on these events at TFD Motorsports. <clears throat> I love it. That guy says it all, doesn't he? Steve Wilkie, USA 1. He's intense. <laughs> Vision. They're seeing what you're seeing on the okay. replay. Stevens is out of it at this point. It's a dead heat. Four close to the camera. Chevrolet in the middle. The bounce will put the win on. Right now, everybody's still waiting to find out. Scott is still too close to call. I think we're going to hear the times. Let's listen. on my 
Mike Wise faced Cole the story. They thought he had it. He hoped he had it. But the win goes to the master of disaster by four one hundredths of a second. Here's the big congratulations hug. No fear this time. That's just a hug of congratulations. Doug Spaniard's got the win. And Army is going to talk. Well, first Mike Wise going to congratulate us. Now Army's going to talk to us. Well, on a night of competition like this, you can only gonna have one winner, but what a story this has been tonight. At one point in time, I don't think you were even gonna come back. I thought I was gonna be upside down before the night was over with that second last run there. How about this Mike Wan? You and he put on just a whale of a show here in this final. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be tight, and then well, I took off, and I heard Mike right there, and uh, King Crunch died out. So I thought, well, the only thing I got left is to go up for Mike. And boy, I looked over, and we were going across the finish line, and I thought, it's right neck and neck. I don't know who's going to tell. What it looked like to me was that you just got the good bounce and bounced that right on him. I waited until I landed on the second set of cars to hit third gear, and it seems like I stayed on the cars. I got into third gear, and I think that's what got me to win. Congratulations to you. Thanks a lot. In Dallas, Texas, it's Texas Stadium, actually in Irving, just outside of Dallas. All right, we open the qualifying round with last week's winner, the master of disaster, the Clydesdale and wild hair, Marvin Smith, the old stopper truck. He's out of Arnold, Missouri. Clydesdale out of Georgia. Masters out of Minnesota. But all three of them leave side by side. Clydesdale starts to move out a little bit in the middle. Now we've got some problems on the other end of the track. Clydesdale gets tagged on the end and going over. It was wild hair losing control and smashing in to Clydesdale, but the damage is done to Bennett Clark's truck as he is on his roof. Wild hair could not get stopped. He went out of control. Bennett Clark had a nice run and was just sitting there, and wild hair out of control came over, smacked the Clydesdale, and on its roof, the truck from Georgia went. I think we're going to get a look at a replay. The word we're getting is that Bennett Clark is okay. They're talking to Bennett. And, of course, one of the problems right now is he's harnessed in upside down, and they're trying to get Bennett out of the truck. But the word, there he is indeed. Matter of fact, that's Army down there helping to pull him out. Is Army down there getting ready to do interviews. Thought he was just going to do some nice, calm, simple interviews. Instead, he's in the middle of a crash scene. Now, watch the end of the run, folks. Wild hair just loses control, and Clydesdale was trying to go out of the building, and he gets rammed by the wild hair and Marvin Smith. One of the most unbelievable qualifying attempts ever. And Bennett Clark, you can see that he is shook up. But he looks okay. And I, I think right now he's trying to say, what happened, why did it happen, and where did we go wrong? I just thought I had a good qualifying run. Bennett acknowledging the cheers of the crowd is obviously everybody happy to see he's okay. Army's going to talk right now to Bennett Clark about that flip. First of all, Bennett, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, Army. Uh, you have any idea what caused you? Have any idea it was coming? Well, right at the last minute, uh, I looked to my left. I saw him coming. I, I just full throttled and tried to try to get ahead of him. I thought I was going to get just ahead of him. I didn't think he was going to hit me. And then all of a sudden, he hit me. It started over, so it got too far over. I knew I had to let out of gas. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you something that I heard a minute ago. Were you aware they cut these ramps different today? Did they, anybody tell you this is not the same track you ran on last week? Well, I was aware of it. I looked at the I looked at the second ramp. I knew I was going to catch a little bit more air than what we did uh, at the last race. So, you know, I was I was expecting a little bit of air, but I wasn't expecting to roll over. <laughs> I'm glad to see that smile. We're sorry for the bad luck, but I'm sure you'll turn it around. Thank you, Armin. So the Clydesdale Chevrolet of Bennett Clark out of Georgia is on its roof. And there's the guy who put him there. Although, you know, it wasn't intentional. It's not like he went over to get him. But the wild hair went out of control. And Marvin Smith's truck smacked into him. And now they'll pull the Clydesdale and try to get that truck right in. But uh, I don't. who knows how long it's going to be before Bennett Clark is able to get that truck back together. Boy, you can see the substantial damage. Army has worked his way over to find out from Marvin Smith what went wrong. Marvin, do you have any idea what caused this? We just talked to Bennett. First of all, he's okay. I want you to know that. I'm glad no hard that. feelings or anything, but man, you know, there's only one door here, and you both were trying to get through that sucker in a hurry. Well, what happened, Army? We just got so much speed. We were flying through there. We just, we just had a hard time slowing down. And uh, that was, you know, I really don't know, other than we were both under control. We just, 
we just couldn't shut him down. He said that he was actually trying to gas it. He could see you coming. He said, I was trying to beat you to the door. Man, it looked like trying to put a round peg in a, in a square hole right there. Yeah, I was, I, was trying, I was trying to get off of it. I was trying to stop. I started when I come off the end of the car. I was trying to come down on it. I just couldn't get stopped. I had a break, so you know, I was doing all I could do. You can see the skid marks. You know, so. Okay. Well, Bennett Clark was shaken up, but he knew he was okay when he was in the truck. His still alive. We go to the semifinals. Now, Crusher got a bye run in the quarterfinals because Thunder Chicken couldn't make the call. So, Crusher should be a fresher truck. And Bigfoot has had trouble at the starting line, Army, in every run tonight. Look where Andy Brass moves. He moves to the outside. He's going to have to clean the engine out. Keep wrapping the engine. They've got to get fuel to the engine. The fuel mixture is not right. It's stuttering about 50 feet off the starting line. truck race ever you just saw it between the carolina crusher chevrolet and the bigfoot ford andy brass it bobbled on you right on the starting line have any idea what happened no i don't you know we've been having problems with that right on off the line all all night tonight it's been bobbling on us we, we fixed it one run and then this one it acted up again well by the crowd screaming we just found out you're coming to the finals you took the win gary does that surprise you it was a very close race. I knew I was going to push the truck really hard, and they're running against Andy, and right there at the end, I thought he did get me. He was right. You're going to see it right here, and there it is. By about the length of a wheel, Andy Brass and Bigfoot with probably, I don't think there's any doubt, that no one in a monster truck race has ever come back from a bigger deficit because the crowd is absolutely going bonkers here, and Andy Bertrand is beautiful. Speedway for this final matchup. It's Bigfoot number four against Equalizer. Again, a slow start for Bigfoot. Equalizer is building a huge lead, but we've seen this before. And here comes Andy Brass, a full head of steam to the first jump. Now Bigfoot's got the inside. He got a little squirrely as he came off the first set. Equalizer trying to build up momentum on the outside. It's going to be another photo finish. Here they come to the wire. Because Bob Chandler's saying, this is not my best truck, but I think he thinks this is his best driver. And Andy Brass is airing it out. Watch him come to the finish line. They almost collided. Look at that. Bigfoot almost landed on top of the equalizer. Wow. Let's watch it from this angle and see if we can tell who the winner is. Again at the end, Bigfoot, if he'd have come towards the center another six inches, he would have absolutely landed on the equalizer. But it appears that the equalizer barely wins it. The finish line was actually right at the end of the car. Here's the grave digger, Dennis Anderson, out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Notice something that is not on the truck, Scott, the front headlight. He is notorious. When he turns the lights on, he's on 100%. There must be something wrong with the truck that we're not aware of. He goes up against the outlaw, Chevrolet versus Ford. We're going to learn something right here. Mike Wine and the outlaw from Bedstock in New Jersey. Digger gets the good jump out of the hole. Right now, believe it or not, it's almost a 
an even race. Digger works the inside. Now watch Wine come out of the top of the screen. Wine will be working his short by. Oh, look in the air. And they're only, oh, we've got problems. Brave Digger scatters all over the track. They're spreading to everywhere. He's trying to shut it down. Meanwhile, Wine's working the inside. Rapnell's a good turn. All kinds of stuff flying out from underneath the Brave Digger. It's the outlaw now coming around. Digger still rolling, obviously a little lighter. Yeah, but listen to the ball. qualified the outlaw at 41.82 let's look at it again watch the stuff and i mean i don't know what else to call it because several different parts come flying out from under the digger wow what that is the safety shields were coming out from underneath it they served their purpose they kept everything contained under the truck dennis anderson will now survey the damage looking underneath his great bigger monster truck Obviously, more problems for the digger. It's been a year of breakage, and it continues in Louisville, Kentucky. Chris Chapman's in the pit, and I understand now working her way over to talk with Dennis Anderson. Let's get out of there now. Dennis Anderson, obviously, uh, no front drive staff. Can you tell us if there's any other problems? Yeah, we broke a mid plate that the transfer case bolts to. You know, in qualifying, the, the ramps were really kind of steep, and, uh, I, you know, got a right much air, came down on one side, it crammed the shaft back into the case, and it broke the mid plate on the transfer case, and uh, broke the front drive shaft out of it. Do you believe it's a track? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's like, we're going to run fast, we kind of need some mellow ramps, we can still get air. That, that track right there, if I really would have hammered the truck, I would have skied it out and broke it in two, probably. Perfect is the way the Micro Machine driver feels about his truck. We'll see that truck a little bit later. Here we go. You talk about two big bad dogs. It's the Grave Digger and King Kong. Stand up time in Myrtle Beach. The Grave Digger rolls out both headlights. Scott, he's told us many times when both the red lights are on, I'm like the old red light bandit. I'm going to hammer you hard to the wall. Who's he going up with the wall with? The kid out of Texas. The truck he's comfortable with. This could be one of the best runs of the year. Both drivers ready to go. Side by side over the first go. Oh, what a finish. Digger's got the victory. Yeah, you got to call it. I couldn't tell. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. They're going nuts in Myrtle Beach as the Digger has pulled it off. The adjustments Chris Chapman found out about must have worked because he looks super strong. And Kong laid down a great shot. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger just beat him. Wow. That was one of the best side-by-side. -side. Replays coming up, we understand. Look at side-by-side. A little bit of blue smoke out of Kong. At this point, they both pull the trigger. He just jumped further through the air to take that win, Scott. Yeah, I don't know. If that track's a little bit longer, Kong might have won the race. But when they crossed the finish line, Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger still had about a wheel length victory as Anderson in front of a big crowd at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. There you see the margin of victory for Dennis Anderson. It's less than a wheel. Dennis Anderson, the word we get, you take the win by one red headlight. <laughs> I'm glad of that. You know, we went back in the pit. Uh, I looked at his time and looked at my time. And I told my teammate there, Kim, I said, uh, I said, I think if I lean the motor five points, put a fresh set of plugs in it, we can put him out. We got the power to the ground all right, but in that run right there, I just sheared the back drive shaft in it. So do you have another drive shaft to get back in this thing? Yeah, I've got another drive shaft, but I don't know if we can change it fast enough. You know, we don't have U-joints set up in it and everything like that. And the, uh, the safety shields is a big deal. You know, we have to have them on it. <laughs> Kurt Fisher. The second major upset of the night. 
and there was nothing wrong with the Grave Digger. The micro machines just beat him. Army, this has got a different suspension from the big foot truck and the equalizer truck. Everybody's playing the game, trying to figure out how to do it. They come up with a new shock absorber that's used exclusively of off-road racing. I tell you, those shocks are working for Fisher. He just put a big nail in the coffin of the Grave Digger. Yeah, the suspension was the difference. Watch Grave Digger on the second set of cars get a little sideways. I think that's what cost him. Here they come. Now watch Dennis. He had to come back. See, he got thrown a little sideways, and that gives the victory to the Micro Machines and Kurt Fisher. Army Armstrong is going to talk to Kurt right now. Well, the Breen boys said they found the right combination when they hooked up with the Micro Machines and this driver, Kurt Fisher. Kurt, it looks like you guys are here. The new shock, the new suspension, everything looks great. Boy, Army, I tell you what, we've battled this for the first month now since the truck's been out. The truck never did a real good showing. We got it all together this week to come down here. We didn't get to try it before we came down. Of course, the Breen boys, that's the way they are. They like to do stuff like that. So we come down here and we tried it and we're happy. Barefoot, the Chevy. Bigfoot, the Ford. They went side by side. It was too close to call. The official said, go back, rest for 10 minutes, and do it again. Same lane. The far lane, it's Barefoot with Scott Hess. In the near lane, Bigfoot, Andy Brass. Barefoot, the Chevrolet, Bigfoot, the Ford. All right, here it is. Their time through the first round. Very close. Here they are. Here they are. Look at Andy Brass and Bigfoot. Andy Brass is in trouble. Andy Brass in trouble. Hang on, Andy. Oh, and he gets her stop as the fans down here start to back out of their seats. Oh, who won that one? Who on that one. The Ford fans say Bigfoot won it. The Chevy fans say Barefoot won it. Who won it? Are we going to do it again? Barefoot is the winner. Barefoot, the Chevrolet takes the victory over Bigfoot. Right. Barefoot with Scott Hess. The Hoosier from Auburn, Indiana takes the victory in the 500 Ford oh, Chevy. Go for a ride on the top Chevrolet. A matter of inches. Barefoot, the Chevrolet defeats Bigfoot. It's been an incredible night of side-by-side -side competition, and we are down to the final two in Charleston, West Virginia Civic Center. It's time for the Monster Smash. Chicken tied for six. Pony Express jumps up to the eighth spot. Mopar Magic and Gary Wiggins ninth. And Jim Miller's Barbarian moves into the top ten. Wow. Incredible racing action in Charleston. And the kid, Cinderella, shocks them all. Pony Express beats Grave Digger. Join us next week. You never know what will happen on Tough Track. This is it. The classic matchup. Bigfoot versus Barefoot. This is the event that everyone came here to see. It's the classic lineup with Ford and Chevrolet. 
And this is the view from inside of Bigfoot. Here we go. Both drivers bringing up the RPM. They're just about ready to go. Here we go. They're on their way. Look at the height of Barefoot. Bigfoot is the winner. Bigfoot takes the win. Jerry, you mentioned the height on Barefoot, but it seemed like the speed of Bigfoot is what brought Bigfoot to the victory here. That's correct. That time that he spent in the air of Barefoot cost him the race. Bigfoot went straight and right through across the finish line. When we come back, we'll take a look at how the race looked from inside the cab of Bigfoot. We'll also have a winner's interview. Richmond, Virginia, we're down to the Monster Smash Final. The two survivors of the DNT Monster Truck Challenge. It's the Grave Digger against the World Champion Equalizer. Cinderella story, it took place in Richmond, Virginia tonight. Dennis Anderson, bad luck, maybe it's over, but when you turn around to good luck, wow, you couldn't have handpicked a better place. Yeah, you know, Army, I've had pretty good luck the last, uh, you know, last two years out here, and uh, I just try to keep my cool here. You know, I got a lot of Mudbog fans, the guys that's known me from Mudbogging years ago, and my hometown, mom, dad, my wife and kids, everybody in the stands, and they really want me to win, you know, and I want to win too, but, you know, we pulled it off and made it to the finals, and I really couldn't do it without Trower cams, TCI torque converters, uh, creative glass for fiberglass body parts, and M30 hand cleaner. You know, it's really amazing. It takes a lot of people to make these teams work. And believe me, a bunch of people are on your team tonight. Congratulations, Dennis. A well-deserved win. All right, thanks a lot, Army. Bring up the Clash of the Titans, Bigfoot and Gravedigger to meet the Ecology Eliminator in the final. A wheel standing launch for the Gravedigger, but a sideways landing. He'll turn anyway. Jim Cramer and Bigfoot swings around perfectly and has to make up the difference. Coming into the last turn, it's going to be tight. Anderson goes wide and looked almost scared of running into Bigfoot side by side, but now Cramer goes past the winner. Look at Anderson all over the track, but a loser nonetheless as Bigfoot uses sheer intimidation to win. You can see the advantage going to the grave to off the starting line. Then that bottle allowed Jim Craner to make up time. That put them dead even going into the last turn. Now watch Anderson. He had it straightened out, but saw the blue Ford coming around. He actually gave room to Jim Kramer and then went sideways trying to make up for his own mistake. Kramer benefits on Anderson's indecision. So as a dejected Dennis Anderson heads to the pits, the semifinals have produced a Ford versus Chevy, Eliminator versus Bigfoot battle, and Chris Chapman has Jim Cramer. Chris? Jim Cramer, an impressive win over Gravedigger. How'd that make you feel? 
Oh, real good. I tell you what, my Firestone tires are biting so hard, I got to loosen up my clutch so I get more holes out. He jumped me out of the hole, but I got him in the corner. And that's the main thing. Okay, you're coming up against the local favorite, Jim Reese, the Eliminator. Jim, uh, I raced before. Uh, uh, we kind of go tit for tat, you know what I mean? Sometimes he wins, sometimes I do. I'm going to give him a heck of a run. The truck's doing well. I'm going to try to keep it together. Good luck to you. Thank you. And thank you. Next round. Well, we GMC, a truck owned by his father. He will take on Andy Brass and Bigfoot. The road to the final. Torres defeated Nightmare and the Carolina Crusher. And then he had a bye to the finals, whereas Bigfoot defeated USA 1, King Crunch, and Nightlife. And there's a look at Bigfoot 8. There's an old saying in motorsports, Gary Lee, and you know it as well as I do. The difference between men and boys is the price of their toys. And ironically, the two biggest toy manufacturers in the country are sponsoring each of the competitors. To talk a toy, it'll be on the side of the Taurus truck. The Mattel Hot Wheel, it goes on the side of Bigfoot. The classic Chevrolet Ford New Driver manufacturers. Everything for a Hollywood motion picture script is going to be on the line right here. This could be the best monster truck race ever. Side by side, a half track, Gary Lee. It's still side by side, almost a photo finish. I can't call Who it. won it? I can't tell. Who won that thing? That could be. We could have just seen the best monster truck race ever side by side neither kid would blink nobody wanted to back off on the other guy what a race here in memphis you have to be impressed army with this youngster jack wilman jr he went up against the most formidable of foes in bigfoot and he may have beaten him let's watch right here oh it looks like oh i, I won't call it we're gonna let the track crew tell us who won that. I don't know. I've seen a lot. I've been around a lot. That's the best I've ever seen, Gary Lee. Well, who are they gonna give it to? Watch this. Let's watch from this angle as Jack Wilman Sr. takes a look, and I can't tell from that angle. No, that's the third he seems time. to think that perhaps his son has won. As we take a look one more time, Army, see if you can't get those two drivers together to get their comments, as once again, it is too close from our vantage point to call. Okay, the word we get, Gary, coming over the headset, winner goes to the Chevrolet by four thousandths of a second. Congratulations to you. Yeah, it's a tough run, you know, Bigfoot 8. You know, it's the toughest truck Bigfoot's got, and it's tough to beat. Let me bounce over here to Andy. Andy, congratulations on that was super. I've played this game a long time, gentlemen. That had to be the best monster truck race I've ever seen. Yeah, that was. That was a real close race, probably the hardest one I've had to run. Taurus's new truck, is it's hard to beat, and I knew we was going to have to pull a good light on him to get him. And all the way down through there, it was close, and I knew it was going to be close at the end. Well, one of the questions we had at the beginning of the show, have the new technology trucks arrived? I think the answer is yes, because they were both in the final today. Gary? Let's take a ride with Jack Wilman Jr. in perhaps the best monster truck race ever. He's on the hammer hard over the first set of jumps as he defeats Andy Brass in Bigfoot. Our congratulations to Jack Wilman Jr. Well, for Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. That wraps it up. Thanks for joining us here in Memphis, Tennessee. We'll see you next week for another edition of Truck and tractor power. Now, here's news about an exciting new home video from Diamond P Sports. We're ready for what has to be described simply as an all out war. The Grave Dick Chevrolet of Dennis Anderson, the qualified number two in this field, takes on the pole sitter, the quickest and fastest machine in qualifying and through the elimination.
Downs, Andy Brass, and the incredible Bigfoot Ford. Staged and ready, waiting for the green light to flash. They leave the line together, maybe a slight advantage by Bigfoot. Unbelievable finish! And it looks like the Bigfoot Ford may have pulled out the victory. But looking at the replay, wait a minute. It looks like the Bigfoot Ford may have left a fraction of a second before the green light came on. Indeed, it is a red light start, and the word is coming to us from the U.S. Hobbit Association officials. The Gravedigger Chevrolet of Dennis Anderson is officially the winner. A foul start, believe it or not, by eight thousandths of a second for Andy Brass and the Bigfoot Ford. Unbelievable. i tell you what, Gary, when it's going your way, it's going your way. See what oh, I mean? safe at home. Andy Brass almost a little grass stain on the driving suit there. Here's Fred Schaefer in barefoot, and he will go up against the fastest loser from round two, and that is Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. Well, once again, Gary, it comes down to a horsepower game. The chassis are about the same. The horsepower advantage should go to barefoot. Remember, Schaefer has never won in this particular type of competition against these trucks. He has been to the final. Whoa, look at that. You see it? You see him carry the front end? Literally powered, horsepower, raw horsepower, and they get together on the end of the track. That was just a love tap right there. That was kind of a congratulations. That's called nice driving ride. it out the back door big time. Look at this. Watch him pull the wheelie right here as he gets on the throttle. Look at this. It's like two pit bulls going after each other. Neither one's going to give. So Bear. Barefoot will go against Bigfoot for the championship here in Wisconsin. Battle of the Blues, brother. It's Chevy against Ford. And there is a good look at Fred Schaefer. Oh, what horsepower he had. There's just a little nudge right there, no damage. No harm, no foul. We're ready for a championship competition here from the uh, Union Grove. That's right, he certainly does, because just a few weeks ago at the Houston Astrodome, Taurus did beat Bigfoot. This is the new breed of monster truck. These are the racers. All tubular chassis, special suspensions, fiberglass bodies. They are fast, 9,000 minimum pounds. Taurus will be in lane one, driven by Jack Wilman. Bigfoot in lane two, driven by Andy Brass. This ought to be a good race. The winner of this one goes into the final. Who's it gonna be? Here we go. Bigfoot by about a fender. Bigfoot accepting a challenge from Taurus gets a fantastic start. Clears all the automobiles and flies through as the winner and moves into our final. Todd Blazer, in the meantime, though, you have to admire this kid. His semi-final finish in the first race he's ever competed in on the U.S. Opera Association Camel Tour. And if he can get around starting, we'll see another huge upset. You never know. We just saw the number one qualifier lose. Maybe number two's number's up. Could be. I'll have to wait and find out here. Starting inches forward to the starting line. Blazer already patiently waiting for him up there in the stage beams. The starter looking to clear the top end of the track. He'll spin around, point the flag at each driver, make sure they are ready for the flag drop. And it's, when that green goes down, it's definitely time to get it underway. Checking the drivers. The starter waits to drop the flag. They're gone. Boy, Blazer rolling the start there. He's got the advantage. But look at Sartre moving in. Unbelievable finish. Sarton drives around a huge hole shot by the kid in the Jeep and puts the Skull Chevrolet in the final round. Unreal. Todd had an excellent run to begin with, but uh, Gary Sarton really pulled that off. That was by far the best run Todd's made in all three of his runs. Qualifying first round and even this losing battle had been picture perfect. But look at Sarton. The determined look still in his eye. He literally puts this Chevrolet into orbit. A lot of smoke from underneath as he over revs the motor. Tremendously hard landing. Look at the stance of that truck going across the finish line. You have to remember he picked this up, as you just saw, by a couple of inches driving around the Jeep. That man can handle a monster truck. And you've got to remember that's still a heavyweight vehicle. 
Blazer, in the meantime, got that rolling start. Didn't have the tire completely across the line to constitute a foul start, but boy, he looks like Jeff Bainter at the wheel of this old thing. Definitely no conservatism here as he puts the Jeep in the air. Nice landing, that short wheelbase making it get squirrely no matter what he does. Look at him looking over at the finish line to see if he can get around Sarton, but instead has to watch the skull bandit Chevy drive around him by a matter of inches. Again, it's, uh, I was talking about the, the con truck coming up. Crusher here has lane choice. He was the faster qualifier. Yeah, if he goes where I would go, he goes to the outside where he's got some room. Exactly. That puts King Kong into, again, lane claustrophobia with a guardrail on his right and the low inside retaining wall for the pit area that the stock cars use here at Myrtle Beach Speedway every weekend. I said it earlier. It's like riding a rocket ship down a bowling alley. You go a little bit left or a little bit right, you're in big trouble. They come out side by side. Chevrolet is Carolina Crusher Chevrolet. Oh, Scott, he's in trouble. Look out. He's still going, trying to get it shut down. Oh, no. Fire. We've got a major problem on the end of the Middle Beach Speedway. The, the fire is burning on the King Kong truck. It has landed on two police cars at the end of the track. Steve Kane apparently is not out of the truck yet as the fire is continuing to blaze. Everybody's going down. Check. Okay, I can see. Here comes Kane. He is out of the truck. There's Kane right there. He's gonna, taking the helmet off. Okay, I'm going to work my way over and see if I can catch him, Scott. Unbelievable. And you see a few smiles. That's because the crowd sees that Kane is now out of the truck. And for, gosh, at least 30 seconds, nobody could spot him with fire all around. It's almost weird. He's out like walking down no man's land like nothing happened. Look at this. I, he's in shock, Scott. I was afraid he was seriously injured. We couldn't find him. Nobody could see him. And you can see Steve is wanting to walk this one off. That's Nick Rossi, the owner of the outlaw truck with his arm around him. And Let me get over there, Scott. He's coming my way. Man, you can see that Steve is just wanting right now to take a deep breather as Army gets over to talk with Steve Kane after, I don't know, that's the most terrifying one I've ever seen in monster truck racing. Here comes to you, Army, Steve Kane. First of all, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, Army. You have any idea what happened? Uh, when I come over that second set of cars, it got really squirrely on me, and uh, it looked to me like I was going to hit for that wall, so I was trying to compensate for it when I was, you know, before I hit the ground, you know, turn the wheel a little bit, and I think I turned the wheel just a little bit too much, and, you know, she, when, when she hit the ground, that front end really hooked up, and, uh, it looked, looked to me like when you turn the wheel, the right front hit the ground, but that, at that time, the left front wheel was up on the rail. Is that what could have thrown you over this thing? You, yeah. When you got the left wheel onto the rail, it looked like you're really in trouble. Yeah, I think that's, you know, I really don't know. Everything was happening so fast, you know, I'd, I'd have to look at the video, but I'd say that'd be about right, you know, that front tire hit that rail and everything. And then... Well, we've been talking in the sport about how you drivers have to do something that's almost unnatural. That is, when you get in trouble, you have to gas the engine. That's exactly what you did. I cannot think of anything you could have done different to get out of that situation. Well, I don't know. You know, I seen that sign coming up, and uh, all I was trying to do was get it turned back over on its wheels, but nothing worked, you know? I'm glad you're okay. We'll see you uh, next week. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Scott. Army, he's shook. Yeah, he, he's in shock right now. One of the things I was wondering about, why were those vehicles located at the end of the track? Uh, that, God, I'm just going to be real blunt. That should not have been the case. The, the right rear suspension collapsed. He's steering it, but you notice in the replay, the right rear came around on him. He's driving. He's doing the only thing he can do. But the right rear suspension gave away. That's what caused the accident. Now he throttles up on it, explodes the engine, goes in the a big quick alcohol fire about everything disastrous that could happen just happened in about a two second span to that kid we're going to analyze it a little closer army as they continue to try and upright the king kong truck first of all no one in the police cars and obviously that's a very dangerous situation very scary and as you documented why the cars were there is any you know somebody's got to answer that question as he comes over though i think the key thing army was back before that point the instinct now every driver knows when you get up on your side like that you've got to throttle out if he would not have throttled out he would have simply flipped at that point and obviously saved himself a lot more trouble but the instinct is to power out and try and save it yeah but you got to realize these trucks have kill switches on it there was another person involved mike speller at the end of the track the tnt official was trying to make a call, should I kill the engine or not? He let him go, hoping he would power his way out. But again, what I keep coming up with, why in the world were these vehicles sitting at 
at the end of a racetrack. I don't think they should have been there. These were two, we just got word, these are two brand new police cruisers that have just replaced the cruisers that were demolished in Hurricane Hugo. This, they're not a week old, look at this. Unbelievable. This is for real, plus the 76 sign. That just went up last week. I guess you know what it's time for, Army. It's time for the crunch of the week.